In today's lesson, I thought I'd showcase a more advanced technique in Adobe Lightroom Classic. When you're developing images inside Lightroom Classic, there's an option to alter your colors that doesn't really seem to be used that often, and that's calibration. The calibration feature found deep inside of the develop module is a very powerful feature, and in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to use it. Hi, I'm Terry Van Heiden, and today I'm gonna to show you a feature that not too many people use or even seem to know about. However, it's once I show you how powerful it is, I think you'll love using it and you're gonna insert it into your Lightroom Classic workflow. So let's jump into Lightroom Classic and I'm gonna show you how calibration works. We're inside Lightroom here and I made this little image up, this little graphic that has uh, some primary colors in it. So as most of us know, the the colors that we're seeing on our screen are made up from three different colors and that's red, green, and blue, RGB. So the red, the green, and the blue. Now there's also some subcolors that also are created once we do this. So if we interlock those colors, we would start getting where they, where they uh, transfer over, you're gonna start getting other colors and that's yellow, magenta, and cyan. So these are the main colors that you, in a color wheel that you're mostly gonna work with inside of any images that you're seeing projected light through. And that's what our sensors do. As we look at this and we wanna go in, and let's say we wanna boost uh, the red in this image, okay? So we come over to basic and we go over to our saturation and let's pull the saturation up. As we pull it up, we can see that we've now increased the saturation of the red, but we've also increased all the other colors. So this panel here, the basic panel, is global, right? It'll, it'll enhance the saturation or vibrance of any of the colors that you work with, right? But not, uh, you can't really do individual colors here. You're just pulling up all of the colors in your image. And while that is sometimes useful, it's not exactly what we're looking for when we want some really nice detail work. So let me show you. I've made a couple of uh, copies here that are virtual copies. So let's go ahead and reset this one here back to normal. And we'll take this one. And instead of using going into the basic panel, we're going to click all the way down at the very bottom is this calibration. So we untriangle it. And the version we're using in Lightroom Classic is 13.4. That's today's current version when I'm recording this. And it's version six. So that's the version that this calibration is working at. So version six. So make sure that if you're working on a different uh, version of the program, you might have a different uh, version of the calibration tool. So at the top, we can see we have these red primary color. We have red primary, green primary, and blue primary. These are the three colors, right? Red, green, and blue that we now have control over. So let's just take the saturation of the red primary color and bring it up and watch what happens. When we bring it up, we have enhanced the red. We've also enhanced the magenta just a little bit as well as the yellow. See how if we bring that down the other way, those are the colors that are most affected by this change. We can, whenever, whenever you're in Lightroom and you want to get back to where you started, you can just double click on the word and that'll get you back to center. So the next one down is the green primary. And let's go ahead and bring up the saturation of the green primary. Obviously we're saturating this green. We touch on a little bit of yellow, but these aren't really being affected. So let's go ahead and zero that back out. And again, the blue primary, as we slide saturation that, we're gonna see that we're saturating this side here of the blue and it'll take the blue and the little bit of the green and cyan and make different changes on that. It affects, it'll lightly affect all the colors, but it's gonna be much stronger on the certain type of colors that it's affecting. So let's go ahead and back into here. And if we, if we took this and said, well, we really wanna enhance that red. So let's go ahead and uh, saturate up the red. Maybe we desaturate the green just a little bit. And now when we look at it, when we compare it to this one, that where nothing's been done to it, we click on here and we can see, wow, okay, so we've saturated the red and not really affected the rest of the colors. So where this comes into play is, let's take a look at another color chart that we have here. Now this has more variations on the color, but as we look at this, you'll see when we change our saturation, we're saturating 
not necessarily all of the colors. We also have the hue slider. Now the hue slider allows you to alter how that red is viewed. So when we slide the red hue slider to the left, you can see that it kind of makes everything a little bit more violet. And then over here, it's a little more yellow. So you can see how that changes, but you, you see that the blues and the greens aren't really affected that much in this shot, in this particular image. So if we go down here to the green hue, we can turn that around and slide a little bit. And what's kind of handy here that a lot of people don't use, so this is, this is for subtle changes. This is not for changes that are big global changes. You can use saturation for that. But when you come over here to these numbers, you click on them, you can use your keyboard to plus up how much you want to include. And you can see here we're at plus 15, but we can bring it down if we want to be more precise. So this is more for precise color changes inside of your images. So I don't know if you remember the last video that I did was about color sensors and how different color sensors will always have uh, yield colors differently. That's just how it is because they have their own, their own color science. And we found when we compared them that those colors weren't, you know, the reds weren't the same. Sony's red is different than the Nikon red. But you do have the ability in this calibration to go ahead and start tweaking just that. So we have here, we have, this is our Nikon file and this is our Sony file. So let's go back into the Nikon file. And we noticed here on the Sony file that this red is a lot more saturated and it's a little warmer. So we can come in here and we can say, let's go ahead and bring up our saturation of the red. And if we want to bring it a little bit warmer, this will make it a little more violet. But if we go on this side of the slider, that makes it a little warmer. So as we start looking at these and comparing the two, now we're starting to see the reds are a little bit more in line. But if you notice, if the blues aren't really altered and changed, the blues are still the same. You're still gonna get that same Nikon blue. So you have the ability inside of this calibration tool to calibrate your images. Now, what you can do if you wanted to make a, a, a preset of this, you could just go in, figure out whatever your calibration is for whatever film style you're trying to go for, make a preset of it, and then you can go ahead and save that and then just click the preset whenever you want to do it. So that's a pretty simple way to do that. Let me show you how that's done. So let's see, these are our changes that we've made. And let's say this is what we want our colors to look like. We can come over here to the presets, click preset, create a preset. And we're just going to call this calibration Nikon. So what we'll do is we'll uncheck all of these. And the only thing that we're going to want to click on here is our calibration. And that's over here. We click on that. And that's all this is going to do. So whenever we want to use this as a preset, we will have this as just a calibration Nikon filter. So let's go over here. We take this. This is our Sony. And let's say we want to click that. And that's going to change those same colors to alter that. So in it, by taking your your calibration numbers and then creating a preset. It's a real simple way to kind of keep all of your files in line, especially if you shoot two different manufacturers or if you're going for a particular type of a look. There might be situations where all of your landscape work, you want the greens really to pop and you want that to kind of be your, your style. So that would be something you could do in calibration. You make a preset of it, calibrate all the greens and boom, they're all done. So let me show you how this really comes into play when you're working with landscape images is where I use it all the time. If you're enjoying this kind of content, take a second to click the like button and then subscribe to my channel and then hit that little bell icon and YouTube will notify you when I put out a new video. Now, while I read and answer all of the questions and comments I get in the comment section below, you may want to contact me directly. So feel free to send me an email to terry at imagelight.com and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll put you on my mailing list. So I'll let you know when I have a new video released as well. All right, so we have a landscape image here. Now what's interesting here in, in light, when we work on a raw file, let me just go back for a second. When we work on a raw file, we have the ability to work with the shadow tint. If we wanna change how that shadow tint is created on a raw file, but it won't work on a JPEG that's grayed out. And it also won't work on a TIFF. That's grayed out as well. So only work on a raw file if you want that slider up there. But 
realistically, I don't use it that often, so it's not a real big deal. As we look at this image here, this is a shot of the Deschutes River in Oregon, and you can kind of see it was early in the morning. So let's say we want to add a little bit more red into this earth. So we can come over here and we can start bumping up the red a little bit. That looks good. And just make sure it's a warmer red, and that's why we move the, the hue over a little bit. In the green, let's say we want to enhance the green in some of this foliage down here. So we can take and increase the green. And of course, when we increase the green really dramatically, it also picks up some of the yellows. So you gotta be a little cautious with that. And we'll drag the hue over a little bit. There we go. And now this is where you really enhance the green is when you're working with the blue channel. So check this out. If we bring this up, you can see that we've really enhanced the, the green in that, in that channel. So and you can see these are all different. We have 34, 29, 51. These are all different. So if you were trying to do this through vibrance or you know, the regular slider of saturation, then you're going to end up saturating different tones all at the same time, where this one we can take individual tones and make it exactly how we want it. So it's a real precise. Let me head, turn this off and on so you can see it. See, that's what it started with, a little flat, little dull. Then we let our calibration take over and we can see that we've enhanced the red and also enhanced the greens. Let's take another one here. Another shot here, this was shot under kind of overcast light up in uh, the Grand Tetons. It's an Aspen Grove. So one of the things that we wanna do is we, let's say we wanna enhance the yellows, right? So if you want to enhance the yellows, we're looking at the blue, right? So we can slide the blue over and change the hue of this and make that a little bit more orange. We can take our saturation and drag that up a little bit. Let's take a look and see what green does for us. First thing we'll do is, is check out the saturation. And yeah, as we bring up saturation, we're bringing up the saturation of those yellows, which is nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at the slider. And as we slide this, see this is a little cooler, this is a little bit warmer. And the same with the reds here, we know that this direction to the right is a little warmer, so we can warm that up a little bit. And as we bring that saturation up, now we can really saturate those yellows. So let's take a look at the before and after. Quite a bit different. This is how it was shot under the lighting conditions we had, and this is our end result. So you could, if you wanted to, you could save this as a preset. So if you had other images in that same set, you could go ahead and copy that to all of them. And that way they all look similar with the much brighter type of leaves instead of what it, when we originally shot it. So depending on what kind of look you're going for, this is a great tool to do that. I'll show you one more here. This is again, a river in Oregon. And we have all this greenery, which looks great, but let's take it through our steps here and see what we can do. If we go to saturation of the red channel, let's go ahead and take a look. We start bringing up the reds up inside where the pine needles are, right? We'll start saturating those. And we'll start saturating the reds that are in here as well. But we're not really affecting these greens that much. Let's take a look at our hue. So if we bring it over this way, now this kind of cools down the image, right? And this warms up the image. So we have that ability to make those changes right there on just the red channel, which really, when you look at this image, you wouldn't think the red channel has any, any bearing on this. But let's take a look at the green and let's saturate the green. Now, saturating the green does help somewhat and actually has a kind of a realistic look to it. If we slide our hue, we can see it can go more yellow or it can go more green. So let's just do that just a little bit. And now watch what happens when we go to the saturation of the blue channel. Check this out. We're taking the blue and changing it. So let's saturate the blue. And look at that. You can really bring the green up in this, in this image if you wanted to really go overboard and bring that green up. But we're just working with the greens, getting that to look exactly how we want it. Again, you can see it didn't take very long. All these numbers are, are individual. So we've divided out saturation and spread it out over all three colors and individually saturated or desaturated the things that we wanted to. So again, in the, in the as you're going through your saturation, you have the ability to maybe desaturate a color if you're looking for something in particular. So there's two ways that this slider goes, right? It has different hues and it has different amounts of saturation. So you have the ability to put in the numbers that you want to get exactly what you want. And I find that using this, tweaking it just a little bit on each of my uh, landscape images, it really is a, 
is a, a great way to go. So I'll put up these three landscape images on my website if you want to download them so you can kind of see, uh, you know, you can try it yourself and see if you can get the same results. And then obviously you can use it on all of your own images. If you've got any questions on this, of course, leave them in the comments or email me and uh, we'll see you next time.